We're going to make <clears throat> a slightly more advanced version of the spinner ring. The only thing is it's not going to spin. Get your ring size. Measure the inside diameter. Write the number down. Mine is 19 millimeters. Measure the thickness of the metal you're using for the ring shank. This is one millimeter. Add that to the diameter and multiply by pi, 3.14. So mine ends up being 62.8 millimeters. And that is the length that we're going to cut our ring shank. So set your calipers at 62.8. Well, set it at whatever it's meant to be for you. Set this, just gently tighten it, and that will hold it in position. Hook this on the end of your metal and drag the back of it across and it will give you a nice straight line to cut to. Use your saw, file it, make sure you have a nice flat end, uh, brace it against your bench peg and file this way. Anneal it because you won't, probably won't be able to bend it. Anneal it, bend it around into a circle, solder it. <clears throat> so I've cut the material to length, filed the ends, annealed it. This is seven millimeters wide for this, for the one we're doing. So now take your flat half round pliers. Half round always goes on the inside <clears throat> so it doesn't mark the middle. And just curl this into a bit of an oval. And we want to make sure that the ends fit perfectly together. So when you get it so that you think it's perfect, look up at the light. You shouldn't be able to see any light in the join. If you can, uh, you're going to need to either take it back apart and file it, or you can just hold it squeezed tightly together on your bench peg, saw at about a 45 degree angle, starting at the top of the joint. And when you <clears throat> When your saw goes through, it takes half the thickness of the blade off either side of the join. So it should be an absolute perfect join at this point. So now we're going to hold this joint up on the third hand, uh, flex it top and bottom, two or three little bits of hard solder, and solder it. So once it's soldered, <clears throat> quench it, pickle it, to get the flux off, dry it, round it up on the ring mandrel, push it as far as you can by hand, use a rawhide hammer, take the ring off, turn it over, round it again, as to keep it from being tapered. Now you're going to take your sanding stick, and you're just going to follow the curve on the outside and you're going to sand until there's no more solder visible. So when, it, when it's done correctly, there should be an almost invisible line of your solder. It should be really difficult to see. When you get that done, take a piece of sandpaper, put it on your bench, and sand the sides. Just by putting it this way. Yeah. And then we're going to take a split mandrel on the hand piece with sandpaper, and we're going to whiz up the inside to make the inside joint invisible. That's the first step. 
that once you have your ring finished, inside, outside, on the sides, <clears throat> we need to make another ring to go on the outside. So measure the outside diameter. In this case, it's 21. And we need to add the height of the wire we're using. So this is 1.8. Write it down again, 21 and 1.8, 22.8 times 3.14, and that will give us the length of the wire we're using for our outside ring. Mine came up to 69 something, so oh, on this, cut it a little bit long, so I'm going to set this at 70 and mark it, and then cut it and anneal it and form it around my ring. Just hook that on the end, drag it across, and it leaves you a nice little mark. This is annealed. <clears throat> you can either wrap this around a ring mandrel, a couple of sizes smaller than this, and then spread it out to fit, or you should be able to just wrap it around your ring. Now, leave about 10 millimeters straight bit sticking up, form it around, and you'll want an equal amount sticking up on either side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a cushion cut square bead. So you can see it's fairly flat this way, and it's square. And this is uh, 16 millimeters square. It's 14 millimeters square, which is the same size of the bead that we use for our spinner ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that our bead will be in the middle. Yeah. So form this outer ring so that it's a nice snug fit and so that the distance between these two horns is 14 millimeters and then we'll solder the outer band to the inner band and we want normally we would have the solder join away from the top which is where we would normally solder something on in this case we're going to put it at the top so that when we solder the two rings together it won't open up that join so a nice snug fit on the outer ring, and uh, then we solder it, hard solder once again.